I've had a Solus S6 11.4 kilowatt inverter running out in the shed for about 13 months now. It's powered by a Nissan Leaf battery and about 16 kilowatts of solar. It's been running 3 to 11 kilowatts worth of miners, depending on the sun and battery state of charge. And it's been totally automated for 10 months. That's been a great way to stress test these inverters in real world, high demand conditions. And believe me, it can get hot in the shed. We're still at 108. Since then, I've added these two Solus's here in the shop, each with its own LG16H Prime battery, mainly for experimenting with different configurations. If you've watched some of my older videos, you've seen these in just about every possible configuration. That's always been the way I learn best, by doing it. That's why it might not look all neat and tidy. I'm constantly reconfiguring things. So no wire troughs for now. Before we get into what I've learned, I want to say thanks for all the support on the last video. The comments, the subs, it's been incredible. A lot more people are talking about high voltage solar, and it means a lot to see that kind of interest. So thank you. If you're new here, I'm Ed. This channel is about building and testing high voltage solar systems from the DIY side. Over the past year, I've been studying how these three to 400 volt systems behave in real use. What kind of wiring they need, how they handle heat, and how they hold up under constant hard load. The heat and constant load aspects are what I'm concentrating on because of the system I'm building out and type of loads I have. High voltage isn't just about bigger numbers, it's about moving the same power with less current, smaller copper, and better efficiency at load. So in this video, I'll go over the key lessons from the last 12 months. What's worked, what hasn't, and what I'll be doing differently. This will be solar specific because that's what I have. The inverter itself has been extremely robust and reliable. The battery emulator and Nissan Leaf battery combo have worked flawlessly. The LG 16H Prime batteries have also performed flawlessly. Thermal performance is excellent. I've run the shed inverter for hours at a time in 105 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperatures and see only about a 50 degree Fahrenheit internal temperature rise. I did add an external fan array on top of the inverter because I, I run the inverters flat out for hours at a time. I think it's just good practice. The lower the temperature is the better for the electronics. Solus list 221 degree Fahrenheit limit. So there's plenty of headroom. You also don't need the fire rated cement board behind it like the low voltage inverters require. So what hasn't worked? Well, for one, the Solus app. It's fine for casual monitoring, but it only updates every five minutes. If you connect through the direct Bluetooth connection, it updates faster, it's every few seconds. But here's another thing, the latest app updates force location access, and man, I hate that. So my workaround is RS-485 into Home Assistant, which exposes 400 metrics for control and monitoring. We'll deep dive into that in another video. The Leaf battery has a 12 volt dependency. If it loses that 12 volts, it shuts off. I keep it powered with my power supply on a small UPS. Some use trickle charge 12 volt batteries. Another one is that the 16H LG battery can't dark start the inverter. If everything's off, inverter, PV, grid, and you try to turn it back on, the LG can't energize its contactor because the Solus first has to send a 12 volt enable to the battery to energize it. With no battery voltage present, the inverter can't start. Some batteries like Will Prouse's Goodweed does have live output voltage, so it can dark start, but that's a safety trade-off that LG is trying to avoid. There's some workarounds for that. Turn on the grid if you have grid available. You can turn on PV even if you have just a few panels that'll get you over the 80 volt start threshold, or you could supply your own 12 volt control voltage. Just have to make sure you don't backfeed the Solus. And that's really about the only thing that I've got on, on the Solus. There, there hasn't been any major issues at all. Just trying to think of any more things here that, that have happened. If there's an overcurrent situation, only thing that happens, it just shuts down and then a minute or two later, it automatically restarts. All right, so before we wrap up, here's the inverter some of you have been asking about and I've been watching. It's the Solus S6 EH3P30K03. Now I'll put this up on the screen. 
It's a 30 kilowatt three phase hybrid inverter that's aimed at small commercial and large residential systems. It can be configured for 208, 220, or 240 volts AC three phase. But hold on, don't dismiss it if you only need single phase. Here's why. The interesting thing is, looks like it's three phase four wire. So you should be able to get, depending on the configuration, 208, 220, or 240 single phase across any two phases and 120 volts if it's set for 208 from any phase to neutral. It has dual independent battery ports, can handle up to 140 amp charge discharge current, supports 200% PV oversizing, and tolerates 160% overload for short peaks. It's got a less than 10 millisecond grid transfer time. It accepts battery modules from roughly 100 amp hours to 280 amp hours and supports 100% unbalanced loads. And what I'd like to see is what kind of sustained loads this thing can handle. Go ahead and drop an S30K in the comments if you're interested in seeing more on this inverter. And another piece of good news, looks like Signature Solar might be, well, they're, they're thinking about carrying these. Well, as always, thanks for watching. And remember, drop a comment or even an emoji in the comments for that algorithm. It seems to have worked last time. I'd also like to know what kind of content you guys are interested in, so go ahead and drop that down in the comments also. Had some pretty good ones last time, and I'll be working on those. I appreciate you, and until next time, adios.